in Swiss Tag over again. Okay, do you have a time? Don't comment. I don't care. Okay, that's why I can watch you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to talk about MinStack again. Um, review, client server database. There's no new people here, so I'm going to just proceed this one. Proceed with this one. And um, just an additional routers, routes to the controller, to the specific controller, right? And that controller would then interact with the view or model. Um, no new people here, so I don't really need to talk about this. One thing that I changed because um, we're using Angular 2, which is TypeScript. So instead of Angular JS, uh, I should now keep saying Angular or Angular 2, right? So what I've learned is basically Angular version 1 is written in JavaScript and Angular version 2, or it's called Angular only, is written in TypeScript. And um, basically, you would have two separate things. You have the client machine and backend server. In the client machine, you would have your browser. And on top of that, you have your Angular. And on Angular, you have your application. And that is the one that would interact with the API. And that API would interact with the Express.js. Uh, so Express.js is your framework in Node.js. It handles the um, middleware. And can I see the next screen? Oh, Angular is not client machine. Client type. No, it will client server. No, no back end the server express here, and then Angular is here. Whatever is translated, then it can be downloaded here. Everything, oh, you mean it everything, everything under the has to be from the no, no, the current. Or oh, Angular will be also downloaded. No, Angular will be converted to JavaScript. And it will be downloaded to then, the pipeline. And they will talk to Angular will talk to the pipeline with API call. This this is, this is the, they are distributed processing. They yeah. are not located to the server. Not at all. Are you yep. sure? Yep. In hackathons, we usually build separate back end and front end service. This, this. This is no, no, no. The back end and front end service are agreed with that. Okay. In terms of a location, this is your located to server side. No, Angular is nothing located. So they download everything to client side. Oh. This is really nice picture. You can I know. I uh, saw to that everything correct about Angular is here. But really, to the node J, Angular does not need a node JS. No, it does not need a node JS. If you have other other language for backhand, that's fine. That's fine. As long as it oh. offers the same API. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Keep asking and it may change the answer. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> because when we developed this one, the client logic is here. So that's why for your courses, we learned this first. And then right. now we move to here. We learn by hand first, and then we move to here. And we talk about how to yeah, API call. No, when actually, no, let's, let's just go. Currently, we have one machine, okay? One machine installed the Node.js. We installed the Express. We explore the Angular. Angular is not here. Angular is not here. This is my method. Angular is not here. No, no, no. If this client machine needs is anybody who is access. This is your machine. Any machine. No, no, no. When I am the developer, okay, I'm developing front and back end. I have to deploy this one to the server. And then any client coming, they can access them, then it'll be downloaded. Yeah. You are developer, okay? You need an Angular and everything on your machine, then deploy to server. The same is Angular is just a static file. Angular is just a static file. So Angular file. Just a store in a like store in what I have something like that. This is just a static file. And here is a backend. This is the notes. And this is my browser. This is my browser. I will go to here, fetch this whole thing back to my browser, and then never talk to them. I don't need it. So 
under a real, really big combined market. Oh, I, I say it's a server. If it can be the anything. I have the Apache or whatever. Yeah, whatever. No. But if you have a Node.js, okay, let's say that this is my internet, okay. Currently, we are using Windows or whatever. Node is here, right? Then they are downloading Express. Here, the Express. They download it, uh, 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 <coughs> Angular. Angular with multi key. This is, this is a server. Server is not host. Now. It's a, okay. This is the, my development of the server. This workstation, okay? Workstation. And then this is a client business logic. This is a lot, okay? Now let's deploy it. Don't go DB is here, okay? Don't go DB. Okay, Mongo is here, Mongo D is here, Mongo is here, okay. And now when you deploy the server, which one will be deployed? The, the Angular will go to the static server. And the node here, yeah, okay. all of the other things will go. No, Angular is going to the, just the okay, web server. Yeah, just like this one, just like the email. The same as the email. Angular is just one file. It's like the email, like the HTML file. Okay, because I never deployed them, that's why. Okay, if you deploy there, you are going this way. Okay, let's say this is a part or, or an Nginx, okay? Nginx. And then, this is a connected way. This is a connected way. This is a MongoDB, right? Database server. This is the Node.js Express. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not connected. They still have to be connected. Then I'm here, then browse. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this guy talked to the back end. You, you find this back, okay? Yeah. And you have some login. Then it's right here. Yeah. That's a one time fetching. Yeah. This line's probably not. Oh, because always I developed here, I never deployed that I didn't see this picture. You, you the folder is where this is the old way that we can run. Everything will be turned from the server, you put your, your view, it's all in the server. Because of that, any web browser spot the Angular, because Angular is a JavaScript. Yeah, and any browser support JavaScript. Looks like a view where everything they downloaded this one here. Yeah. Right? Same concept. <laughs> I could never mistake. I tried to explain this picture. Oh, that's that's good. That's all the way. Do you have a class? Are you taking any class? Okay, no, you say you watch this one. So, no JS, and minions are very, very happy about it. I, uh, and right now, I'm just going to tackle uh, callbacks and event loops. Um, callbacks, um, I try to find easy words first to explain for the audience. Callbacks, you can just say they're just JavaScript functions. Function call, callback. Why is it callback? Because you call them later. Or call, call me maybe, something like that. Something like that. And asynchronous, uh, sometimes called async. Um, easy way to explain it means it could take some time, could be not right now, could happen in the future. Okay? Because of the, the in order to implement the callback function, you should have a uh, Yep. So uh, I pulled out uh, Kevin's uh, resource and basically has something like this. So first we'll talk about callstack. We saw Azure eyes on the callstack. And basically right now we have a file and we have uh, three functions. Um, one function to print the square. How do you print the square? You uh, call the square function. How you put the square a number? You call the multiply function. And then, so in this file, three functions and one function call. Okay, so if we run this step by step, uh, I'll try my best to post. So first it's being called is a print square because it's the only function that's being called. And then what happened is inside print square function, it calls the square function, right? And then if you continue, yeah, right, is it wrong? Oh, okay. Oh yeah, talk about the call stack. So basically, uh, 
uh, in the word it says stack. So it uses a stack data structure. What happens there is whenever there's a function call, it goes on top of the stack. And then if, it, if, it, if a function gets returned, it now pops out of the stack. So it's, it's like that. This is a data structure stack, right? Yep, data yes. structure stack. Info. Last yes. 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 So going back, we have a, we called print squared and print squared called square, and then let's resume and let me try to post that and then square needs to call multiply. This is Node.js. He sent this to us. Uh, there's a video and. <laughs> okay, and then after. And then there you go. Um, the first return would be the A times B. And then it pops out. It's too fast. So what happens at return, every return, it pops out until. Uh, and then uh, console.log, yep. It, it's so fast, let's do it again. Um, so call, 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 pop, 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 and then now it has the console.log, and then the print out the console.log. Yeah, 16, yeah. Uh, no, so basically what happens, uh, this dot call. This is a synchronous, right? This is a asynchronous yeah. callback. Yeah. Uh, this is a callback. Yeah, this is a, that's a different topic. I, I'm going to show a quick about that. No. This is not called that. This is a function call. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. This is the function call. Yes, this, is, this is not yes. called that. Yeah, keep passing. But you, what is just a show? This not this. Yes, I said. Yeah. He will show this is the function. Okay. No, you are not. This is just a function call in synchronous manner. Not yeah, Corbett should have a synchronous, it's asynchronous. Don't block it. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so basically, uh, just to recap, call, 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 pop, 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 and then call, pop, pop, pop. Right. Next one, we go to this one. Uh, this one just shows if you have a recur recursive function, and it's just, ooh, it never pops out. Stack overflow. Um, I'm gonna skip this one first. Um, this one the shows the synchronous, but the simulation is not working correctly. So basically, it just gets stuck on that one. But it should call, 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 and then wait for the function to finish, and then pop, pop, pop. Okay, this is a sample of um, asynchronous. If I'm correct or not, please correct me. So basically, to simulate this, we have a console log, and then a set timeout and a console log inside that, and then another console log after that one. So the expected output with this would be your output i, and then output by, after five seconds, the output n. But in terms of the stack, uh, you call code line one, code line three, code line seven, but code line seven goes here, and goes back to the callback queue, and then once this is empty, it pushes the uh, callback to the stack. So, yeah. and you're, you're right about this. This callback is not called. Right. And the inside the set timeout shows the asynchronous call. Yep. So, so what happened there is console.log, uh, it run and then pop. Okay. It's too fast. The next, the second one is this one. And then now what happens, because it's a set timeout, and that's an API, so it's not gonna get processed by Node.js. It's gonna get processed by the web API, which is the browser, but Okay, okay, and then, yeah. I think I can put in the better, uh, better idea from the uh, uh, com. There is a very good example of JavaScript. Okay. I see the most common. They were very good. Yeah. 
So after this one, it throws to the web API, and the web API knows, oh, set timeout, and it has a parameter of uh, 5,000, which is five seconds. So it would have that loading. And did you see that call stack? It already called the code line seven, console.by, and process that, and then resume again. And you would see it goes to the callback queue, and it sees the call, back, uh, call stack is empty. It should push it back there or whatever. So there you go. Okay. Because of callback function is always against the function call inside the function. Uh -huh. So moving on, um, things that I've found in Express, everyone knows about it. Fast and opinionated minimalist framework for Node.js. So basically, uh, like Ruby on Rails and Django, they're opinionated, meaning the, they favor convention over configuration. Right, they have the modern architecture. Yes, yeah. this is like whatever you want. And yeah. it is sometimes good. Yep. Power. But it's cool as well. Um, people I already discussed this last week. So one of the things you can use uh, your Express is to handle the CRUD operations and con uh, connect to the DB. Uh, Next, this one. Uh, again, we all always encounter this word middleware. So the next slide would. Yeah, I, I want to understand why. So I did try to get some easy concepts. So middleware functions are functions that have access to the request object, the response object, and the next function in the application's request response cycle. So it's like it's the one consuming that instead of Node.js. Because again, Express it's on top of Node.js, so it kind of helps with that, right? Okay, and then this one, um, I haven't looked deeper. The next function is a function in the Express router, which when invoked, executes the middleware succeeding the current middleware. Does it go to another middleware? Is that it, or? Next middleware, yeah, okay, good. Uh, that's done. No middleware. Go to the random. Go to the So there's, there's the function here, and there's the request. And then it goes to middleware, uh, consumes the, the, it consumes the request, goes to the middleware, and middleware go, has the next, then next, and then response. next, and then, response. And then function. That's mm -hmm. the middleware. It, it doing the request and response, if there is a fast function, that's why this is a real function. This is something you want to run. And do you have this middle middleware here? And this middleware will run here and run here. Will run before your function run and run after your function run. And also if you have a middleware too, you put it here and put it here. So one, one of the things like authentication. Authentication, log, log. Logging the after. Log that means where is the very good definition of the middleware? Well, I, I guess this one is a simple. Because sim middleware is a two generic term. This, this, this is very, this is one of the simpler explanations I got. Where from where? You, you can, okay. I have resources in this slide, so. Okay, so um, again, for Express, uh, it also handles the router. And basically, when you get an HTTP request, it goes to the router. Router would check which controller it needs to connect to. And then it would forward that request. And then based on the request, it either go to the model to do the, some CRUD operations and go back from the CRUD operations. The controller can send it back to the view. And what is the middleware here? It's not models, it's not controller, it's not view. Controller. is for also controller. No, you made a middleware directory. Oh, well, that's it. You didn't create the network under control. No, I created uh, in the entry point. Entry point, we have to initialize the device. And they have a function that is used. That's the middleware. So you think the middleware is meant to control? It, it's right the controller. This I function is in controller. This, this is a controller. Because controller will control the view we will use. Oh, which model we will handle. Right? If 
controls over there. And the middleware doesn't do anything with it. Grab to or or well, middleware can grab the only control function or other function. Because because we have to call the control. The request that come in will call the Okay, I'll look at the example. Okay, we got middle that. Oh this one. Um, this kind of answer uh follow through C is what is saying. So when you do this uh, express JS uh, syntax, mm -hmm. basically when you do an HTTP method and do the dot get, that's the HTTP method that request. Then now you have the path. The next one is the function, which is uh, includes the callback arguments. This one is the next, and you also have the rest of the request. And um, oh, that's the definition of a middleware. Uses the middle. The middleware uses this thing. Is it correct? Okay, now I got it. Thank you. Because uh, we use the middleware in the, when we design the design of the system. It can be anything between you and Yes, me. so I think uh, that's the same. Now this is a different definition. Yeah, that's a different. Oh, okay. It will be a layer. Okay. Okay. And I uh, did not have a lot of time researching MongoDB. So basically, things that I've learned something new is aggregation framework. I uh, forgot about what I learned about aggregation framework. Oh, a map reduce. That's it. So Bison format, basically it's a binary oh, JSON. Yes. That's something you I need to learn more about it. Ad hoc query is basically something you do before the query. I haven't looked at much of that one. So that's it. And that's, I have reference. <laughs> what I look forward to all the time. So that's good that you guys are here. So yep. Okay, that's it.